This video is so important, I had to bring my laptop out. Now, I made a video earlier and I gave a scenario where a guy and a girl were seeing each other. The girl put an ultimatum on the guy and he wasn't serious at that time. So he left and then he decided after a couple of years to come back. Would that woman be a fool? And there were some people who are forced to move away from home because they're from London and they get accepted into a great university like York, which is a part of the Brussels group, right? I wouldn't pass up an opportunity like that. So it's going to be impractical for them to travel three, four hours out there in the morning and three, four hours in the, in the evening, right? I know someone who does that, but they are a lecturer and they get paid for it, right? So that's a good enough excuse to move away from home, right? So sometimes I think having too much choice is worse than having not enough choice because you can't make a decision because you know that there's always going to be something else that comes up. When you're talking to someone on Tinder and these silly apps, if someone says one wrong thing, you're like, oh, on to the next person. And all you do is you just start filtering through the people. I don't know, man. I just think, I don't know. I just don't like the idea of all these dating apps. And secondly, come on. Do you really want to introduce like this person that you've met to your family members and friends and say, oh, we met online? No, 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 no. Just, just listen to how that sounds. We met online. Imagine you have children, right? And they're 10 years old and they say, mommy, daddy, how did you meet? And you say, we met online. No, I don't know, man. I just think it just doesn't sound good, right? This should be a funny one still. Let's go fam. So I dropped a video today, the SYSBM video I'm talking about. If you're a black man and you talk like a neek, nerd or a dork, black girl are not going to be interested in you. And someone's come and leave the comment section of my video and said, how can you go from talking like a nerd to a road you? And I think to myself, motherfucker, you obviously have not bought and read my book fam. If you have, yeah, if you had bought the book, you would know the history from you know the nitty gritty details between 09 and 011. Man was too active, blood. Like, I don't think I can meet another human being that's had as much fight since, man. Seriously, I was a fucking problem, blood. I don't know what was the matter with me, blood. I was like public enemy number one. Me and my girl used to have some little joke. It's called I Beef the World. Literally. Obviously, back then, my girl wasn't about in it, yeah, but. I used to beef the world. I was getting into beef with everyone. Obviously, road use, obviously. But just civilians, you know, men that are on road, like, they're not, they're not road use, but they're civilians, but they think they're bad. Man, I was getting into beef with them. Man, I was getting, I even had beef with one of my barbers before. I'm reviving old beef, like, things that you should have just forgotten about. So, like, when I was 15, so between old 09 and, and 011, I was between the age of 17 to 19, but when I was 15, so call it 07, get me, man was doing a look all, get me money making, and I wanted to re-up on the OZ, innit? And one older guy must have come around, innit? And I paid him 200 pounds for his so-called re-up and that, and it turned out to be grass. That was when I was 15. I caught him two years later when I was 17. I mashed him up and broke him up in the alleyway. He's actually a rapper from my area. I ain't gonna say his name, and he's like four years older than man. Man did mash him up and broke him up. Active blood. I remember having fights outside the police station, blood, and getting knocked out, blood. Active. I could literally drive around Edmonton and think I had a fight here, I had a fight there. I was beefing my brethren. One of my brethren even tried to come at me with a knife. I had three fights back to back with one of my brethren before. Yeah. Two active blood. The amount of enemies I was accumulating was nuts, blood. I want to talk about accumulating enemies, yeah. I'm not just talking about when I'm running with the local gang in my area. I'm not talking about accumulating enemies from that. I'm talking about I'm accumulating enemies on an individual basis. I've got to be with this person, that person. Yeah. Too active, blood. Riding out with the man them every other weekend. Going over there, going there, going. Riding out on my own. Trust me. Man, I've done ride outs on my own, blood. Trust me, I've been in Fort Island Village. Man, been Tottenham, blood. Man, been Hackney like that, blood. Trust me. On my own, fam. Trust me, blood. I remember when I was 17, <laughs> getting on the train at Emma and Green with my bike and the JD bag, jumping on the train, riding it to London Field Station, getting up with something long in the bag, yeah? It was a weak ride out, though, man. It was a shit ride out, innit? Like, man, did he even do nothing in it, so... 
man's not bossing or nothing. But, bro, man's even been there like that, fam. You get me? Man was too active on the road, blood. So, obviously, being a young you on road and that get me growing up in Edmonton, man's going to talk a certain way, innit? It's going to talk street, obviously, innit? Yeah, naturally, innit? Now, I only got one little video that I could show you lot for when man was like 19 and how I used to speak, innit? So, I'm just going to roll the video. This is when I was in Jamaica. And I was on my, my way to go and surprise my grandma. I went over to Jamaica and my grandma didn't know that I was there and I went to her yard and surprised her, innit? It's a different setting completely. You know what? You know why we're in here? Well, you know, they, they do it by mileage, no, 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 by no, 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 no,
get me my people and that and I'm on in enemy territory and that I'm a sitting duck. There's a difference between me just cutting through Tottenham and that. That's different. But all it takes is one little puss, yo, you know, a little neaky, little light skin you to to oh I see that you, you know, call up six man and you get me, it's wrong fam. So I, I couldn't even go to Tottenham College and that it would be too much of a slip blood. Um I had to end up going to a college in Heart for sure and that. But um yeah, man, I, I too active in the beef back in the day when I was on road, man. So, yeah, man, that's how I used to speak, innit? Like, get me? But basically, the reason why I stopped speaking street and started talking like a nerd, <sighs> took the worst advice from some black woman one time, innit? So, let's say, like, 015 or 016, one of the two. You know, obviously, man, spoken about that vending machine business that I started at my uni, innit? So, mum was going to one... Basically, the University of Derby had like a, a, a small campus in Notting Hill. So I used to go there. And that's where I started that vending machine business. Now, there was a black woman. This is cool, isn't it? But she just gave me... I, I took some bad advice from her, innit? So anyway, from a black woman to a young black youth. I mean, I wasn't that young, innit? I was like, oh, 23 or whatever. But a lot younger than her. Young enough to be her son, easily. Remember this woman, I was chatting to her one time. She's one of the administrators in this uni. And she said, you need to stop talking the way you speak. Yeah, you need to start speaking proper. She said, you see your bosses, your directors of your company that you work for. How do they speak? And she got me thinking. She said, if you want to be successful, you need to speak like them. Now, what she didn't realise was these men are pub men. These men are ex-football hooligans for Arsenal and them things. They ain't. But I understood the point that she made. She's basically saying that there ain't no directors or CEOs or no million pound companies that's talking at the side of their neck and you get me, I'm from Edmonton and that. So she's basically saying, yeah, if you want to become successful, you're going to need to change the way you speak and that. I don't give a fuck now. Yeah, I'm going to talk the way I'm going to talk. I'll be successful. I don't give a fuck. I'll talk the way I fucking want to talk, innit? But anyway, I took her advice on board and man just stopped using slang words. Man just, yeah. I stopped speaking with slang. And then, like, at that period of time as well, when she told me that I was off work for a few months and that, you get me? I was stressed, so I took some time off work, innit? And then I was just training with taekwondo people, getting people from my taekwondo club and one taekwondo club called King's College and that. So I'm just around nerds, basically, innit? And if you're, you are what you hang around with, the reason why you talk the way you do is because you're the sum of the five people that you hang around with and that. So, yeah, I just started talking like them. You get me? Especially going to training with them uni students as well. King's College, and they're fucking nerds, man. So, I just started talking like them. Started speaking proper and that. I started watching videos on YouTube, like how to speak proper English. Instead of learning it off of the streets and that. Or from man from school, innit? So... Naturally, I just started speaking proper and that, and it just killed all our man's swag blood. Literally, fam. It just killed all our man's swag. But obviously, man stopped hanging around with people at Taekwondo and people at this uni and that, and I stopped giving a fuck. Because obviously, to speak proper and... Like, literally, man used to really be conscious of the way I speak. So, like, now I'll just say water. But before, I used to say water. Like, I used to, like, really announce my T's and that, like, some dumb shit. I don't even know why the fuck I was doing that, anymore. but, yeah. So, like, people used to, it was so bad. Yeah. I changed my accent so so badly, like, so my accent was so different. People didn't even know I was from London, you know, literally. I remember at work, Karen Gay Council. <laughs> well, obviously, when I first started, man was talking street and that. But then I remember, like, a couple of years later... Like when I started speaking proper and that one girl said like, oh, I thought you was from the countryside and you moved down to London, you know, that bad, you know. Because obviously everyone I worked for Haringey Council was from like Tottenham or Enfield or Edmund. And they were all like local people and that. Ain't it? So she must have thought, because my accent was so neutral, it was like non-geographic, she must have thought that man was from, I don't know, Gloucester, she said, or somewhere like that. Buckinghamshire or something, she said like that. That's a disrespect, blood. But, um, yeah, man, that's that's why I started talking proper, innit? Because I got told by some woman, oh, you know, if you want to become successful, then you need to stop talking street, basically, innit? I ain't no corporate guy, fam. 
But obviously, you know, there are negatives and that obviously to talking street and not talking a certain way. Because <laughs> with this contract that I'm on, obviously I get the tenants' numbers and I always phone them up just so that I can confirm the, the appointment. Because the appointments are booked for me to go to their house and do the test. I don't like just showing up to people's houses and that. Because I know me turning up to people's houses, do I look like a fucking electrical tester to you? Really? No. If you think, if think about it this way, you live in a council house or you live in your own property. If you phone up an electrical tester or you book an electrical tester to come and test your yard online and that, are you expecting a black man like me to turn up? No, you're expecting some old white man and that. So I know they're not really expecting this face to turn up to their door, innit? So I always like to phone them for two reasons, just so that they know, okay, it's going to be a black man that's coming. And for two, just in case they're going to cancel or they're not in, I'd rather not do the journey, innit? And there's been a couple of times, I'll phone up the tenants, I'm like, oh, hello, it's the electrician from such and such company, and they just lock off the phone. They think it's a scam. I, 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 and then obviously, mo most of the tenants don't do that. I've had a few tenants that I just locked off the phone on, man. And then I have to send them a text message or whatever. And, or what I'll do is I'll get the coordinator, the white woman, to go and phone them and speak to them properly, innit? But some of the tenants, I speak to them on the phone, and I can tell they're being really standoffish, standoffish with me. Because they think, like, who the fuck is this guy? I remember there was one black girl. She's from Brixton, but she moved up here. She told me on the phone when I was talking to her. I'm like, it's not a scam. She's like, nah, 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 nah. I know Northampton accent, and you are not from Northampton. You sound like you're from South London. I said, I'm actually from North London. And me and her all chatting on the phone for 20 minutes and that. Um, but, but anyway, she wasn't she at the address, but... Yeah, I've had tenants, they did like proper standoffish with man. I'm like, it's not a scam, it's not a scam, it's not a scam. I've been to the tenant shards and after I spoke to them on the phone and I've got into the property and they was like, you sound like a fucking road man. You know what I'm saying? I never expected you to, yeah? So, yeah, it, it, it is what it is, isn't it? it, it these are the negatives and that when um, you, you talk a certain way. I mean, I ain't dumbing it down. That's why, like me, I can never work in a call centre. I never will want to work in a fucking call centre, blood. I'm not... All of that working in call centre and shit, like, I'm not saying I've got a fucking deep voice or nothing, innit? What I'm saying is, if you work in a call centre, you have to start talking soft like a girl and that. Blood, that that just kills your masculinity, blood. That, that, that turns you soft, blood. Imagine imagine, imagine me phoning up people and from a call centre and that. Blood, they'll think, what the fuck's this, blood? So I've got a video to make. And it's basically going to be about... When a man then come out of jail, because of the way men are, because obviously, bloody, men that go to jail don't talk like Prince Harry. Men that go to jail are usually men that's on road. So men are going to talk a certain way. Men are going to be a certain way. It's better if they go into the construction industry, which is a bit more laid back, a bit more rough and tough. Then imagine a man come out of jail after five years. And then going to work in some corporate office in central London. Am I going to stick out like a sore thumb? You know, sometimes it's better to just blend in with your kind of people or your class of people and that. So I've got a video to make just saying that basically the man them in jail, I would advise them, them go out and get a trade. Because their personality would be more suited for it as opposed to going to work in a, in a corporate office and that. Remember when you go and work in a corporate office in London, but you have to talk a certain way, blood. Yeah, them man they basically feminize you and that. Yeah? You have to talk soft and all them things then. Nah, 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 nah. It, it's not appropriate for the man them that are uh, been in jail for a long time and or talk a certain way, they are a certain way and that. It, it's gonna you shouldn't have to change your whole personality and your demeanour just to fit in at work, blood. So whereas man them that come out of jail and that, you could go work on a construction site, so I'm not gonna know the Ross Club difference. Anyway, man. Uh, yeah, that's it for today, man. So that's the reason why man used to talk like a nerd and man kind of reverted back to my old ways. Stay wise. Done, mate.